So there was this one time when this old Tony posted two videos in one weekend and the entire internet went insane and nearly exploded. Well, guess what? I'm not this old Tony. I'm nowhere near as famous, but I thought I'd, uh, well, I got it out anyway. Might as well do something with it. I took the fuel pump module assembly, whatever you want to call it, out of the old Fiero. And I thought I'd show you something with the uh, fuel level sender here. There it is in all its glory. So I've got that wired up across my graphing multimeter. And I realize that uh, a significant majority of you will not have a graphing multimeter because, well, you know, you all suck. <laughs> Anyway, this should read, in theory, in a perfect world, but we know we don't live in a perfect world, from zero to 90 ohms. That's zero is empty, and 90 is full. So what you can do with this graphing meter, instead of just getting a bunch of numbers, get a bunch of light, glare coming off my shop lights here yeah, hopefully you can see this anyway so as I swing this you can see how the readings change it's doing it in kilo ohms which is kind of weird so that's actually 110 ohms and then as I swing it back down towards zero you can see how the line drops as the reading drops and right now that's around seven ohms. So like I say, in a perfect world, you would get zero to 90. If you've ever wondered why a lot of Fieros run out of gas at about a quarter of a tank, even though your uh, float is actually sitting down at the bottom of the tank, because guess what? You're out of gas. Uh, a lot of them will actually read somewhere around 20 ohms, which unfortunately gives you about a quarter of a tank, even though you're empty. So one thing you can do, and <clears throat> I've seen a lot of different ones. Some of these can be taken apart, some can't. This is the one with the plastic housing, and you'll see that there's a couple of T15 torques here. I've already set this one, so I really don't want to take it apart again. But if you loosen or tighten these screws a little bit, you can actually change the reading. So if you do have one of the unfortunate ones that likes to run out of gas at a quarter tank, uh, you can just do it with your multimeter and uh, you just hook it up across the two leads here. There's my finger. There it is. The, uh, the two leads right here. Polarity is not critical because it doesn't matter. It's just a resistor. And push the float all the way down to the bottom and then try to get this reading as close to zero as you can get. You can see, I got this one down to seven. And uh, I did it by loosening these screws, which kind of changes the position of the resistor element in here versus the wiper arm right there. And I'll flip this over and you can sort of see. Yeah, who am I kidding? Can't see. Mm, let's try right through there. Yeah, I guess you can see. So there is a coil, which is the edge of the resistor. And you can see how the wiper, the little curved part, is sitting on the edge of the wire wound resistor. Put this down, break the arm off. Anyway, so by adjusting the screws here, you're changing the elevation and or pitch, I guess you could call it, of the resistor. So it rubs against the little arm a little bit differently. If you're getting almost nothing, one thing you can try doing is dismantling this completely and sanding the ends of the spring here because that's how it gets the resistance reading from the resistor down to that wire is it passes it through that spring, a little pad in there. Anyway, it works and then you get kind of the same dealio here where it goes through here, into here, out of here, and it just goes round and round in a loop. There's your resistance reading. Anyway, uh, hopefully that has helped you in some way. And if you're ever wondering uh, 
This is the, uh, the connector that sits poking out, dangling down in the engine bay. The three wires here. Hold back a bit. Anyway, the, uh, the purple one down the middle, that's the reading which goes back to your gauge. The black one is common ground for the pump. Pump. And that's the power wire going down to the pump, the gray one. Anyway, so if you were wondering. There you go. Uh, I'm going to shut up now. Oh, yeah. If you're ever inside here, uh, it's not on here right now because I took it off. But there is a sock which goes over the end. And you can get them online. You must just wander down this way a bit here. Uh, it's around here somewhere. I was going to show you the difference between a disgusting old sock that stinks like a dirty sock and the new one. I seem to have misplaced them though, so uh, whatever. It's a sock. It's dirty. You'll, when you take them out, you'll find that they're all brown and disgusting. Uh, do yourself a favor while you're in there. Grab a new one because if those things plug up, uh, you're going nowhere because the fuel flow will pretty much come to a screeching dead halt. And I don't know why I can't find the old or the new sock. I probably threw the old one out. Whatever. Uh, there we go. Now I'm really going to shut up. And talk to you later. Bye. Hey, just a little addendum here. Uh, you put the tank back into your car. If you want to make your life a whole crap ton easier, go grab yourself a tube of Silglide, which everybody should have anyway for doing brakes. Hashtag not sponsored. And when you go to put the tank back in, just put a teeny little bit on your fingertips, like we're talking uh, half a drop kind of amount, and just smear it around all the ends. And when you go to put them back in, those hoses, you won't have to fight with them. They'll just go and they're right on, two seconds. There's another little thing you can do too to help get the tank back in. And uh, what it is, is you run down to the store and you grab yourself one of these Ben Pack two post hoists and a uh, tranny jack. Uh, you know, most corner stores are starting to carry them now, you know, 7-Eleven, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you can just uh, put your tank up here and you lift her up into the hole and you know, slap all your hoses on, which have the, uh, what's that custom, uh, patented term, the uh, the wiener schleiden. That's it. You got your wiener schleiden all over your hoses and they'll just pop right on. And uh, yeah, you hook your straps back up. And you can have that sucker in and out in about five minutes. So yeah, do yourself a favor and uh, run down to 7-Eleven and uh, pick yourself up a hoist. It's uh, worth its weight in gold.